Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, class. This is Professor Coyote, welcoming you back to our tutorial of Civilization VI. Now, when you last remember where our last, our last video left off, um, we were just starting to get our power base going here in Rockhead and Swinnet. Uh, Sumerians don't like us because we're too close to them. So I've had our, our, our scout just sort of park right here. And uh, in case he decides to go after us. Uh, we've got some, uh, our camp is about to be, uh, be wrapped up in about three turns. We're starting bronze working. We've got military tradition for the civics. So when it's about to have its builder going, and that's what our two goals are for this tutorial remaining so far, is uh, get a builder to improve land surrounding the new city and construct a campus. So we're going to go right next turn. Okay. So I'm going to have the scout be right here again. I think it's a good place for him to just chill out. We see him on the path to Swinnet. He's got his own scout just sort of sitting there. All right, so we got Rodakadet. Looks like it's uh, popped at four now. So it's 13 turns for it to be five. Generally, at least the way it used to be in previous ones, they maxed at nine. So we'll see if that continues that way. Uh, Swinnet will pop in four turns, and their builder will be ready next turn. So we'll just pop the next turn right now. All right, so Swinnet's builder is ready. We, we can uh, we can put the Sphinx there. And we can irrigate, uh, put a plantation to get the cocoa. We can harvest some stone. So we're gonna see what those Sphinxes do. Nope, that was the wrong. No, that was the right one. Oh, that's okay. Now well, that was a goof. I don't know why the builder did like that. Well, all right. So Swinnet here. Um, because we need to worry about that. Okay, so they're recommending either a granary or a camp. It's not going to be the granary in a little bit. I'm going to get a warrior going just in just to help build some the defense. So I have a warrior going there. He'll pop in five. I should have the builder back to building the Sphinx. And then the campus will pop in one. So Unity needs orders. I'm going to have him fortify there. Just chill out so he could be a good just sort of defense scout. All right, so we'll go to the next one. Our greatest scholars and scientists already begin to gather at our campus. Providing them with a library would further assist them in their pursuits. All right, so since we got the campus going, some buildings can only be constructed in districts. The library is a building exclusive to the campus district. Since we have completed construction on the campus, we are now able to build a library. Great. Cho uh, choose production to begin building a library. All right, so we'll get a library our in five. Our people have prospered under your guidance. Truly, our civilization has no equal. Perhaps now is the time for you to prove this to be true. Hmm, okay. To win a game of civilization, you need to defeat all the other civilizations in the world. There are multiple ways to achieve this. Most games will also end in the year 2050, or after a set number of turns. If no achievement ha uh, no player has achieved these victories by then, score will determine the winner. Score is calculated as a general measure of each player's achievements in all fields of endeavor. All right, so it looks like it's starting to come towards the end of the tutorial. At least that's what it's hinting at. So this might be a short video, but we'll see. The task before us is great, but under your leadership, we shall not fail. As always, I stand ready at your side should you require any assistance along the way. May our civilization truly stand forever. All right. The status of each victory's conditions are tracked on the World Rankings panel. Open it now. All right, that's the World Rankings. We saw that earlier. This, the overall tab, gives you an overview of all types of victories and your ranking amongst other players. So you're leading. We're leading science. We're leading culture. We're leading domination. But they're leading religious. The other tabs give you more specific detail about each set of rankings. All right. So this will show what we got. Yeah. So for instance, we're leading science because we have six techs. And we're making 8.6 science. He's only got five and five. 
we're leading because though we don't have any tourists, we do have culture of 6-1. And he's got 2-3. And we've got actually our... Uh, oddly enough, we do have military better. We've got military strength 66. Whereas he only has 55. So building another warrior is actually probably a good idea anyway. And he's got faith, but we don't have any, which is fine. So the score is at 330. We're only at 34. We have a science victory by going way far in the future by launching a satellite, landing a human on the moon, and establishing a Martian co colony. Which, of course, we don't have any of that. A culture victory. You must attract visiting tourists by generating high amounts of culture. Which, we don't have a chance on that yet. We do have uh, no tourists at all. Domination would be just to capture their there. Capitals and religious victory. Your religious must become the predominant one. Okay. The result, the rest of this tutorial, will help you to achieve your first domination victory. The goal of a domination victory is for your civilization to be the last to occupy its own capital city. For this tutorial, that means you will have to use your military to capture the capital of your rival, while preventing them from taking yours. How you ultimately achieve this will be up to you. However, we have provided three optional objectives that, if completed, will greatly assist you in achieving this. Alright, so we'll go on the objectives. Okay, there we are. If you are unsure about something or are looking for more information about anything you've seen in this tutorial, there is a good chance you'll find it in the Civlopedia. So we've got this here. We've got build the ancient walls in your capital city, which we'll do. I'll probably do that after the library. Build an encampment district and upgrade with a barracks. I will probably end up doing that in Swinnet, so that's closer. And uh, to win, eliminate the other civilization by capturing its capital. All right. So there's the Sphinx, which gives us culture and faith. Faith here. And then I'll have him go around with these other ones. I just wanted him to sort of just uh, get that, that Sphinx going. Then I'll have him go here next turn. Okay. This so one's got another thing going. I will probably have somebody go here. So things are going to speed up now. I'm not, uh, uh, since I won't be reading off any of the, the tool tips or taking time for our advisor. This will definitely speed up now. So that's great. The Civilopedia, by the way, is this question mark here. I'll tell you everything. It's basically your instruction manual and also explaining each of the, uh, uh, the icons and everything. Okay. So we've got that going. And we've got that going. They're just chilling out there. So I'm going to leave that uh, there in order to keep and I, and then I'm just going to keep building encampments and upgrading. All right, so we got turn. All right, so we got that civic going. So I can either make early empire mysticism or go for a state workforce. Excuse me. Then I'll go to mysticism so we can have that uh, that wonder. So this is going to leave those three goals because we got them all finished now. The, uh, the initial ones about uh, improving the cities. All right. It used to be. Okay, so that would just change it. And I don't want to do that. As you can see here, it also, uh, the campus also increased uh, grants and research, which takes production instead of their own thing. And I could pur purchase some of this stuff if I had enough gold. I do have the 262 gold. So I could just buy out a trader instead of making it. And in this case, I think I might actually do that. Because our traders do make gold pretty easily. And we're already making 8.4 a turn. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to have him go. Should be... Okay, the trader is just automatically going to move. Okay. So it should just go move back and forth now between these two cities. 
And yeah, we spent a little bit of gold on that, but then again, I also wanted to make sure that gets going now. Okay. So you can see our, our things here. The government still says it's got a couple ideas if I wanted to change them. We've now got Stratigos, but I don't have anything to put it in, so. I also have Maneuver now, which allows production towards heavy and light cav units, but I don't have any cav yet. Now, I might switch to Discipline, because I'm not fighting Barbarians anymore. I'm going to be fighting somebody else. So, in fact, what I might end up doing is we're going to swap to Ab Ab Agoji, which uh, does the production towards classical me melee and ranged units. And that just ups production in all cities, so we're good with that. Once I start that trade route going, I might actually swap to the Canvas series. But for now... Oh, Need to confirm the policy. And then my, and next turn, I might actually... That might speed up the warrior there. All right. Okay. That's why, because I had just gotten him, so he didn't actually do anything. Now, I could do a route to Uruk and probably not do very well. Or go to Swinnet. Because I can see here showing what routes I can actually make. Now, I don't think I can do Uruk because... Oh, no, well, actually it does. We are able to trade with Uruk even though they don't like us. So that's good. Or we can trade with Swinnet, which gives us production and food. But I want to get to the gold. So we're going to go that way. So he's going to start going. And boom. And we've got our plantation going. <gasps> boom! So we're going to actually produce, start producing cocoa. And then I will probably end up doing stone for the last one. We'll make one, this one a bit of a production center there. All right. Okay, so we got another warrior going. I'm gonna have him be there. Just, just kind of chill out for a moment. Then swing it. We're going to produce. Let's see. Looks like it won't let us do an encampment district yet, which is fine. You're doing the city center. Alright. So, uh, maybe not do the monument. I think we already built a granary. Yeah, we'll build a granary. That's right. It was suggesting we were going to build a granary, but I built the second warrior instead. Alright, if we actually look at our world rankings... We're actually leading on military strength again. Looks like 58 to 45. So as soon as this library goes, I'm going to do the, wall, the walls and probably it'll have to be encampment there. We got seven things to the granary. And we're going to go here. And when he's got more movement, I'm going to have him do that uh, stone. All right. So he's going to mine. That'll give us extra production. That's our city. As you can see here, we're making 6.3. We purchase the tile. We can purchase an item of gold or faith or change production. All right, but you can see here what we've got. We don't have any... We've only got a city center. We've got growth. And housing. So this is showing what the, how the, the citizens are doing, uh, how much they're eating uh, versus the consumption. So once that granary is doing, hopefully it'll help the consumption. So that's the downside to having so many people is they will end up eating more, which is actually what also determines your speed of how it goes uh, to new population. Uh, we have a plus one for growth food for turn. That gives uh, be uh, and the benefits there. Uh, and the modified. So basically, it's showing, hey, we've got a surplus of 1.1 food, which drives the, the growth. The second thing here is amenities. Uh, luxury resource amenities, which basically makes them happy and want, want to grow. And you need at least one w amenity of some form. You see, they're luxury, civics, entertainment, great people, that kind of stuff. And to gain amenities, you improve luxury resources for now. So, for instance, doing the cocoa was great because now everybody has chocolate. And the same thing with the coffee over in the capital. 
And then housing, we've got uh, five housing for three citizens. So we're going good there. So Swinnet's doing good. And similarly, if you want to see the city for details for uh, Rocket It, they've got a surplus of two food. They've got entertainment and luxury amenities for, you know, they need one for three. And we need four, and we got nine housing for four citizens. So we're doing really good there, which is why they're, they're going quicker. It's seven to go to five here. Okay. The library is going to pop next turn, so we're doing good. Okay, so I got a new research to do. Let's open that tree. Now, I haven't seen any horses yet, but that probably just show makes the horses show. Hmm. No, we're going to go with the archery. If we're going to go straight for a military victory, we need archery, so we need to improve our, our ranged combat. And that'll pop in three turns. All right. So we got there, so I'm going to have them fortify for right now. I'm just going to have them chill out until I can bring them all together and then just stomp on Ura. He's a four. Now, uh, we'll see that right now, the defense strength of there is 35. One of these guys has a military strength of 20. So I should actually, theoretically, be able to do it with both the warriors. But I want to be able to have a defensive strength so it doesn't end up just dying horribly. And plus, I want to move the, the slingers over here. So, in fact, I might end up starting doing that. Okay, so I'm going to have them move here. Because I'm going to start doing the walls for Raw Cadet next turn. Okay. Move. Raw Cadet has its library finished. So I want them to start on the Great Walls. Which will probably be after... I have the ability to do that. I'm sorry. But I will only start the encampment. All right. So we'll see the best way to do an encampment, which it looks like it'll do it outside. You do that for 45. This will remove the woods. Okay. Ah, I see. In order to do these hexes, you actually have to buy them to add to the city. The green ones are the ones we can put in right now. Which, but So I'm going to put the encampment probably here. Well, it's all going to be dropping production no matter what. So we're going to do that right there. Okay. Now as you can see here, it's still showing we've got food going, so that's fine. That's not going to end up just killing it yet. The encampment's going to come up in six turns. And we've got the granary going, so... Okay. Meanwhile, Swinnet is doing fine. It's going to have its granary in four turns, which will help it speed up its, uh, its people. Okay. There. The slingers are going to run over. Our civics popping. So we can give either early empire or state workforce. Because military training isn't doing it, looks like. We need to be able to go right here first. So I guess we'll uh, do the Early Empire then. So that's going to help open drama and poetry or games and recreation. And that's going to be in three turns. Okay. And by which I mean, uh, games and recreation, as you can see here, it unlocks quite a few things. Uh, allows Arena and Coliseum Wonder, Entertainment Complex, and uh, another policy in order to help basically boost people and their happiness. And the same thing with drama and poetry. It boosts culture. Uh, it gives an amphitheater and a literary tradition, which we can't use right now anyway. But, so this is actually two ways to keep citizens happy. That's why I wanted to go with that with the early empire, where a state workforce just goes straight into political philosophy, which does open new uh, governments, as you can see, as well as two diplomatic options. So it's kind of a little... I might actually do state workforce after that so I can open all three options. I just wanted to explain why I'm making these decisions, of course, since this is part of the tutorial. All right. Give me a quick second here. So we're going to go into our next turn because it looks like everything's going along smoothly. Okay. 
So we've got our slingers here. They're gonna be hang I'm gonna have them actually hang out here. And these warriors are gonna have have them move here. Because you can't attach, I believe you can attach them, uh, you can't have them attached there, but that's fine because they're ranged. So they would be, uh, the warriors would be going straight on the capital, whereas the slingers would probably be like, say, back here and firing on it. So right now we got 15 range strength with them and 20 melee strength. So in fact, if we have the warriors should be able to move there and get them ready. And I might end up seeing if we can speed this, uh, the end of this tutorial up. <laughs> or at least uh, have a wall of troops go. So our research pop. And let's see. We, they want us to build a wall as part of the option, so we'll go into masonry. It'll only be two turns anyway. And so we're going to leave this, this part of the tutorial right here. So I'll see you next turn when we get our masonry get going and start getting ready to finally end the tutorial or at least end the, the, the Sumerians. So I hope you have a very excellent rest of your day. And with that, class dismissed.